If you consider yourself a video enthusiast, the Solo Shot 3 should probably be on your watch list. Let's take a look. The Solo Shot 3 is the third edition of what the manufacturer calls their robotic cameraman. The first two versions had pretty good reviews, but were handicapped by fairly long and exacting calibration procedures to get the base station with the camera to lock onto the tag that was carried or worn by the target. The Solo Shot 3 carries with it a bunch of improvements and new features promising fast pairing, powerful cameras, and really cool editing and social sharing capabilities. The Solo Shot 3 went into pre-order status in mid-2015, and I placed my order just after Thanksgiving of that year, with a promised delivery date of spring. The good news is that I got my Solo Shot 3. The bad news is that it was in the fall of 2017. There are plenty of blog posts, and you can follow the update notices on the Solo Shot Facebook page, so I won't go into a long, sad story about the delays. What I will say is that throughout the process, Solo Shot did an admirable job at the old transparency thing. After a couple of missed dates, they started talking more about what was going right and going wrong, and less about dates. I thought their emailed update messages to pre-order customers like me were a good mix of taking responsibility, describing ongoing issues, and thanking customers for hanging with them. Handling bad news says a lot about a company, and they certainly had some bad news to deal with. As you look through the reviews, be sure to notice whether they're about the process or about the product. Right now, most of the negative stories are about the delays, not the product itself. Well, enough about that. Since they're shipping now, you won't need to worry. What I gained through the experience was a bundle that cost me over $500 less than what they're retailing for now. I got the Solo Shot base, the tag, and the Optic 65 camera bundle. My plan is to do a couple of reviews on some of the features of the Solo Shot 3. Now, hour long reviews can be intimidating, so I'll break this review up into a couple of parts so that you can view them as short sessions or simply zoom into the review topic you're interested in. This review is a quick unboxing and quick overview. As I mentioned earlier, Solo Shot refers to the Solo Shot 3 as your robotic cameraman. The earlier versions often showed folks surfing with the Solo Shot sitting on the beach, capturing all the action. By the time the Solo Shot 2 was shipping, folks ended up using the Solo Shot for a bunch of things that weren't envisioned in the beginning. Here are just a couple of things that it can be used for. How about following your kid through the BMX course or running up and down the soccer field, while you actually get to watch directly, that is, not through your camera's viewfinder. Or filming equestrian activities for rider feedback, much like a football team's post-game film study. For me, I wanted to use it to capture video of RC model airplanes that I like to fly. And of course, surfing. And all without rounding up someone to be your cameraman. Let's take a look at what you'll get. So here's what your Solo Shot 3 looks like coming out of the shipping cardboard. It's in a nice heavy cardboard box with a marketing shroud around it. But what's important is inside. So let's take a look. So here's what it looks like inside the box. And yes, I've cheated a little bit and looked at this a little before setting up the camera shot. Here you've got the quick start guide and some warranty information. And below that, you have the quarter by 20 to 3 eighths adapter screw. The armband here, the tag here, the camera here, and the base here. And below the base, a coil of heavy duty wire for charging the base. So let's get this all out on the table and see what it looks like outside the box. 
So here's what's in the box out on the table. You can see the usage instructions and quick start guide and the little envelope that they came in. The tag and the quarter 20 adapter screw to attach the base to your tripod if you need one and a wrench to tighten the base to your tripod without putting pressure on the motor and damaging the motor that turns the base in the horizontal direction. There's the base itself, the camera, the armband to hold the tag on the target's arm, and the USB cord with a mini plug on the base's end. So that's what comes in the Solo Shot Optic 65 bundle. When you have the Solo Shot 3 out of the box and assembled, during the initial power up, it will search the Solo Shot website for the latest firmware and start an update process. With that in mind, you'll first need to set up a Solo Shot user account. I found this worked better using the Connect via Facebook option using the Solo Shot app on my smartphone. Entering my email and selecting a password failed, and after a couple of tries, I went with the Facebook option. I entered my Facebook credentials and I was good to go. The other thing you will need is a micro SD card. Soloshot has a list of tested SD cards on their website on the FAQ page. Use one of these. You'll see that they are high speed and high capacity cards. Users have reported problems with the Soloshot regarding SD cards, so go with the known card first. If all works as planned, the Solo Shot will update the base device, update the tag, then the camera, all to the latest firmware edition. Some users have reported issues, and I too had to try a slightly different approach my first time through with some advice from Solo Shot Tech Support. I'll discuss that more in a follow on review. There have been several firmware updates in the weeks following the release, so some of those hiccups may have been resolved and lots of folks have been reporting no issues during the initial out-of-the-box update process. Here's a glimpse of the update process. So here's a little bit of a description of the setup process. I'm not going to go through all of it, uh, but I'll give you a sense of what the setup process is all about. First, I'm going to be turning on the device. We've got my get started message and the battery indicator shows that it's full, so I'm going to press continue. Now I'll have to connect to my Wi-Fi. I'm going to turn off here while I uh, enter all my secret passwords. So I'm downloading the update. After I logged into the internet, it found an update, asked me to download it. I clicked download. It presented me with the ubiquitous terms and conditions that I hit accept. And now it's downloading the update. Got the last couple of percent of the update to go. Tells me it's preparing to install and the base will restart during the update and not to turn things off. The back of the Solo Shot 3 has a touch screen display for executing commands and making various selections. Let's take a quick look at some of the choices you'll need to make when first using your Solo Shot 3. The Solo Shot 3 will shoot video or take photos. In the photo mode, you can select single or burst mode and set a timer and the burst mode interval. For example, to take a photo every two seconds, you can trigger the shutter from the tag and it will take those photos. In the camera's video mode, you can choose from several resolutions including 1080p 30, 1080p 60, 1080p 120, and 4K 30. The numbers after the big number, the 30, 60, 20, is the frame rate. These high resolution settings are why you need a top of the line SD card. 
You'll also need to select some tracking options. These include mode, field of view, framing, and trajectory. Here's what all that means. The Solo Shot 3 has four tracking modes, water, field, terrain, and flight. They pretty much mean what you think. So, for example, I use the flight mode for my RC planes. I'd use water mode for surfing. The field of view setting defines how big the view area will be. The tight field of view is 10 meters, medium is 20 meters, wide is 40 meters, and extra wide is 60 meters. The framing setting allows you to apply some creative planning to your shot. For the wide and extra wide settings, the frame is divided into a 3 by 3 grid and you can choose which of the nine boxes you want the camera to place the tag in. Tight and medium fields only allow center and bottom center framing. The last item is trajectory. This option allows you to decide how long you'd like the camera to continue panning the same direction when experiencing a signal loss from the tag. The example given is when a surfer enters a tube and the wave covers him or her. Once you've set your various options, you start shooting by taking the tag off the base or out of its storage box and place it 20 to 30 feet away from the base. You press the track button and follow the on-screen instructions on the base. Most likely, you'll be asked to choose the tag you want to track and then continue. The base spends about a minute spinning around and pointing the camera up and down during the calibration process. Once done, the screen shows what the camera is seeing. It's recommended that someone move the tag back and forth across the field of view to help the base get a good sense of where the tag is located. There's a drop-down menu item that allows you to direct the camera up or down, left or right a little bit, to fine-tune the framing. At that point, either start or stop recording using the record button on the screen or the tag. You'd stop recording, for example, if you were going to take a few minutes to walk down to the shore and then paddle out to the breakers. The base has a bright green LED that flashes slowly when it's tracking, and as I said before, you can trigger the shutter or start the video recording by pressing the button on the tag. The Solo Shot 3 uses GPS or the Global Positioning Satellite System to track the tag. My sense is that the Solo Shot base determines its position and the tracking tag does the same thing. The base station then computes the range, azimuth, and elevation to the tag and points the camera there. This means that both the base and the tag need good GPS signals to work. The Solo Shot has warnings when there is a weak or no GPS signal, as well as warning when there is electronic interference. This can often be solved by simply moving the Solo Shot base a few feet one way or the other. I'm not really sure what kind of electronic or magnetic interference you might encounter, though cell phone towers and high power or high density Wi-Fi signals might be contenders. Another important thing to note is that the Solo Shot 3 won't work indoors. An indoor accessory is planned, but not yet available. Let's take a look at some sample video taken from the Solo Shot 3.
The Solo Shot 3 is pretty much the only thing on the market that does what it does. Other trackers don't track vertically and have more demanding setup routines. As a new and sophisticated device, it's got some bugs along with some promises of greater capabilities to come. My initial impressions have been pretty favorable even though I've had to try a couple of things more than once to get all the parts to play well together. I'll go into more detail in the subsequent reviews. There are a couple of Facebook groups filled with helpful users who have shared their experiences and ideas. If you're into photography and have a special motion video need and enjoy leading edge technology and the joy and frustration that it includes, the Solo Shot 3 is definitely worth your consideration. I'm enjoying mine. I hope you found this brief overview helpful. If so, please click the thumbs up button and be sure to click subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.